Hi, I'm Marie Harden, Dean of the Donald P. Belisario College of Communications. And the wait is finally over. Thank you so much for being with us today as we walk through 45,000 square feet of new programming space for the college. Space where we will do our open, creative, collaborative, and entrepreneurial work. Joining me today are Karen Bryan, an alum of the college and manager of facilities, and Scott Myrick, director of Willard Operations. I'm so excited to show you what we have waiting. And while you're watching, if you have questions, please pop them into the live chat and we'll be happy to respond. Let's go. So as Maria started talking, the rain has just started. So let's get inside. Uh, we're entering the building from uh, Pollock, if you're familiar with campus, which I'm sure you are. And welcome to the Media Center. So we've, we've entered the building on what is uh, considered the first floor. It's, it's ground level at the main entrance side, but as much the building uh, heads south, the back of the building is the ground floor that, that exits well. So we're on the first floor now. Uh, and we're going to take you down uh, the grand stairs uh, into um, what is sort of the heart of the Media Center. Um, so come with me down the stairs. <laughs> So here on the ground floor, um, this is the sort of the heart of the, the open collaborative uh, nature of the center. This is, will all be open seating uh, most days for students uh, to uh, meet and work and uh, collaborate and, and um, you know, develop different things um, sort of serendipitously together. So we're excited for this space. Um, it's a, a unique space to the, uh, that we're bringing to the college. Really haven't had a space like this um, that's you know, bright and, and open and available for students to, to come um, work together whenever they need to. Uh, we're going to move uh, to Steve's right now. Right off of the, the open media center is the Innovation Lab. Yeah, I'm really excited about this lab. You know, we've had so many donors and alumni and of course the university step up uh, to create this media center right from Don's visionary gift to the university's uh, incredible investment and so many alumni and donors who, who've also provided support and the Mary Meter Innovation Lab Fund is really going to power the work in our innovation lab. Now, if you look at it right now, you know, it's still under construction and um, we're unpacking. This is really going to be a place that is kind of a blank, it's going to start as a blank slate. And what's going to happen in this space are those creative and, uh, you know, just really exciting conversations and innovations that really involve students and faculty coming together to create new ways of storytelling, new platforms, um, to, to envision new technologies even, that they're gonna be able to move forward, and in many ways be able to move those forward because of the investment of donors in our Com Ventures Fund too. So what an exciting uh, venture right here on the ground floor of the Media Center. So I'm really excited mm. about this, sky. It's going to yeah. be a lot of fun to see what happens in here. And Steve, let's take everybody in just for a second, just to sort of give them the lay of the land. Um, the, there's a conference room sort of dedicated to, the, uh, to this uh, space so that um, there's a, an easy uh, place to go and uh, focus a little more on uh, whatever's being worked on. The lab itself, like Marie said, is designed to be a blank slate. So uh, when the, you know, when uh, we officially, you know, welcome everybody into the building. I doubt we'll even have furniture in here because we want to make sure that whatever, you know, the first initiatives that come out of this space, uh, we're not, you know, we're not tied into some way that this room is already designed. Uh, sort of one of those features is are these uh, uh, reel up 
uh, power outlets so that you know if, if you, you don't know you know we don't know what's going to happen in this space so students can pull the power down from the the ceiling where, and, and get it to where they need to go there's a pipe grid uh, ceiling in here so uh, as different media products are developed uh, there, there's uh, easy ways to um, add new and different equipment uh, to the space. So, a couple of the features here. Ideas that will fuel our future are going to start in this lab. So, very exciting. All right, so we're going to take you next through the uh, equipment checkout area and give you a peek into the Black Box Studio. We're going to tear down the caution tape because they're working on the floor in here today. They're doing the final pour of the epoxy floor in the studio. But Steve, you can lean in and take a look at this thing. So this is uh, our, our space designed for film style shooting, black box studio. Uh, you can see it's a large column free space, so there's nothing uh, in the way, um, as students are building sets or setting up for productions, is an 18-foot lighting grid uh, with full power support. Um, completely sound insulated. This is actually part of the addition that was uh, added to Willard Building so that we could accommodate a space like this. Uh, the rest of the building, you know, built in the, in the 1940s, you know, there's columns every... 15 or 20 feet. And we knew that for a space like this, we needed to have wide column free space. So we added this as an addition so that we could not only have that column free space, but also have the uh, two story tall ceiling. It's looking good as it's coming together. What's really exciting to me as I think about this space is future Oscar winners and Emmy winners and Peabody winners are going to be working in this space in the next years, in the years and decades to come. So really exciting. Where are we headed next? All right, let's head to the production studio. So we're heading to the other side of the media center. and taking just a brief pause here. These nice bright blue, Penn State blue rooms are um, collaboration areas, teaming spaces that are um, somewhat open, but also sort of nestled away so that you know, students that are working in the broader media center, if you know, they want to be able to focus a little better, they can hop into one of these rooms, use some of the collaboration technology to work on a uh, project together. And there's a number of these spaces um, throughout the throughout the building. All right, we are entering the control room for the production studio, the video production studio. And you can see the consoles uh, have just been installed and they're uh, loading them with all the equipment. And this is our uh, sort of primary uh, multi-camera production teaching space. Uh, so students taking um, intro to studio production classes, um, work out of this space. Uh, PSN TV pr uh, will produce their uh, content from this uh, control room in this studio. Um, and it really will provide a first class professional environment um, for students to uh, learn uh, those uh, teamwork skills that are so important um, in an environment like this. And then Steve, I'll lead you around the, the front here. Uh, watch you step over these cables. And we'll take a peek into the studio. They're working on the, the floor in here as well, but did want to be able to give you a, a peek. 
So a, a smaller space than the, the large black box studio, but definitely uh, appropriate for what will be going on in here. We'll have uh, sets in here that can be used for a variety of productions, news, sports, talk shows, game shows, um, anything that students can, can imagine we'll be, we'll be able to accommodate in here. Um, so happy with the way this is coming along too. All right, well, let's head back up to the first floor. stop here at the, the bottom of our, our grand stairs. You know, we came down the right side. The left side is designed to be uh, seating as well. So your typical day, you know, it would be a place for, um, for students to uh, sit and work and hang out and uh, just like they would down here. And then this can also be used in, as an, uh, a small to medium event space. So we'll have uh, projection, sound reinforcement, and that can be audience seating as well. Scott, am I right? They're going to have power access too. Yep, and you can see where the power has been roughed in. So um, there's there's power sort of all over the place. We knew that you know we know that people have laptops, they have tablets, they have phones, and you always need to charge. So there's power all the way up the stairs. There's power down on the the ground floor here. You can see where they've uh, covered over uh, where they've cut in uh, for floor floor boxes. So uh, when students need to to plug in to to keep working for the day, they should be able to. You know what makes me really excited about this space is for the first time in the history of the college, our students are gonna have a place simply to, um, to gather, to work, to talk, um, to share ideas. Uh, this is gonna be a really exciting hangout space where I think a lot of great ideas are gonna be born yeah. right here. Yeah, so and just yeah, and have, having a, just a sense of place is so important and just you know a place where you can go and you can be a student in the Belisario College and it's it's really exciting for that. Let's head upstairs. So we'll reorient you a little bit. That's the main entrance we came in. We're going to head this way and show you uh, the space for Com Agency. So welcome to Com Agency. This is uh, a space for our um, uh, production agency that does uh, work for clients uh, all across campus. Um, the, this really gives them a space as uh, we are um, slowly but surely coming out of uh, a year plus of COVID uh, as social distancing restrictions are uh, lessened. This gives uh, our students a place um, to come together, be collaborative on projects they're working on for clients, uh, as well as giving them the appropriate space that they need to present um, concepts and uh, drafts and revisions of work uh, to clients. So yeah, it's sorry, really Marianne. exciting to think about. We wanted this to have kind of a storefront uh, location because this will be, Com Agency is going to be a magnet to pull in people from across the university. It's going to bring them into the media center and they're going to come right here to be pitched uh, by our students. And Com Agency uh, I just want to thank all of the alumni and friends of the college who've contributed to Com Agency, who've supported Com Agency, who are interested in the work of this agency. It's really exciting things are happening and will be happening in this space. So we're taking you back to uh, what is a more uh, formal uh, conference room setting for uh, pitches and presentations. Um, and work sessions, so there'll be technology in here to um, 
you know, display work and collaborate on things. Uh, the area that we entered first is a little more informal. Um, uh, would be a, you know a great place to present sort of a final version of a project in the in a more relaxed setting, um, sort of far um, beyond our is a space for editing video editing workstations for students, uh, and then the director of of Com Agency has an office in the suite as well. Where are we headed next? So next we're going to head south in the building, we're going to head down to the Media Effects Research Lab. And as we're heading that way, you'll see on this floor we also have more open seating for collaboration. Uh, and on the right is a multi-purpose room that will be used for classes, uh, lectures. Um, if you can think of it and it needs a space, we can do it in the multi-purpose room. Absolutely. And I love the way these doors open. So when we're doing events that where we want this to be kind of open out, we will be able to do that. So, but you are right, Scott, this room is really designed to do a lot of things for us. So. All right, let's head down to the Murrow Hall. So the Media Effects Research Lab, or Murrow, is where um, our research faculty and students uh, figure out how media affects us. Um, you know, what, what, um, you know, how we interpret messages, how they affect us subconsciously. All sorts of different um, uh, aspects of, of media. So uh, we, we come into uh, what is uh, a essentially a reception area because the research that is done here um, involves uh, st you know, studying real people. So when people come in for studies, they need a place to uh, to come in and be comfortable, uh, be relaxed, so that um, as the research is is going on, that we can sort of get a good good baseline level of you know how are they normally, and then when we expose them to media, when we you know show them. Uh, a clip from a movie or a website or a newspaper front page, we can, we can see how it, it actually does affect them. Uh, so there's, uh, the, the suite itself has a number of different uh, research rooms. Uh, there are survey labs uh, at either end of the space, and then there are more specialized uh, labs for things like uh, eye tracking. So we can see if, we, if uh, researchers uh, show um, a, a participant, a website, we can see, well, where, where is their eye drawn? What are they looking at the most, uh, even subconsciously? So we'll take, you, we'll take you through and show you a couple of those spaces. And we also look at video gaming in this lab space, too. Yep, and this is, this is uh, a space that is, will sort of be designed for that. It will be set up uh, you know, not unlike a you know, basement uh, rumpus room where you, know, people, uh, where you might play a video game so that it... Uh, people do sort of feel like they're in their natural environment uh, during, a, during a study. This is a really exciting, um, in some ways a hidden gem for the college. In other words, a lot of our alumni and friends don't know about, the, uh, about a lot of the work that the Media Effects Research Lab does. Um, but it's really important work. It's about you know, the way people respond to and behave as a result of consuming all kinds of media and interacting with all kinds of media. Another thing that I love about this, Scott, is the, is the interaction that we anticipate between the innovation lab, which is downstairs, and this media effects research lab. So already there are projects underway where uh, you know, things are happening, uh, students are working with faculty to come up with new forms of storytelling, and those will come up to the Media Effects Research Lab right here where researchers can work with those and test those and see what is the response of, you know, of, of a student, what is the response of a consumer to this new platform or new technology. So it's really exciting. And I'll take you into just one of the other uh, lab spaces here. So this one, this is designed more for um, uh, a, a group of participants to come in and do some sort of survey. So um, there's uh, there's basically study carols uh, set up so we can bring in 10 people at a time to, to go through uh, whatever study. And there's a, an identical room down on the opposite end of the suite. All right.
And then one thing I should mention about the reception area is it also doubles as a you know, collaboration and workspace for members of the lab. So when we're not running studies, it's a great place to come and meet and use the, the collaboration technology and, and, and work together. A lot of cool stuff happening here. All right, we're going to take you across. We're heading east now, uh, across the bridge. This is another one of those um, sort of collaboration areas I told you was sort of tucked all over the building, and I know Marie wanted to mention this one specifically. Yeah, these teaming spaces are just absolutely wonderful for students to get, uh, just to get together and talk about their projects. Um, I want to thank the Hearst Foundations for its investment uh, in these kinds of spaces in our building. Um, thank you so much, because uh, these will get used and uh, really fun and uh, wonderful things are going to happen in these teaming spaces. So thank you. Uh, and these chairs look pretty cool. And they're pretty comfortable. Yeah, too. yeah, nice. It provides some sound, a bit of soundproofing too, which I really like. So. And so you, you may have been, you may have noticed these uh, recording lights uh, on the on the walls here. They are um, a bit aesthetic, but they're also completely functional. So when uh, on on this floor and the floor below, when stuff's going on in the black box studio, they'll flip a switch. These turn on, as well as lights above the doors. But people in the space know, hey, something's going on. So probably not the best time to turn on music real loud or you know, run around or something like that. So um, there's some upstairs too that we'll show you. Right, continuing our making a lap around this floor, I will head into the uh, finishing suites. And these are for very high end um, uh, film uh, uh, video post-production. Um, so we ha there are two uh, identical um, uh, of these essentially edit bays um, that students can come in um, and you, you put the finishing touches on projects. So doing uh, color correction, doing audio sweetening um, with you know the, the highest end computers in the building so they've got the power that they need to finish up their projects. Um, there's a uh, at the console, there's a, a place for an editor to work, and then there's also a sort of a sidecar uh, to have a producer uh, working right in tandem with you. Uh, there will be uh, flip down, uh, sort of jump seat style seats on the back walls, so that um, professors can and instructors can can lead uh, training workshops in these spaces as well. So there's two of these, and then they share. We'll just take a quick peek in here. They share um, a a small voiceover uh, studio so that um, as they're uh, finishing up projects that they, if they need to do dialogue replacement or um, you know, sound effects work to a to a, a more limited extent uh, they they have that and both spaces share that so either of them can tie into to this room and and record things live from it And then the, the last stop for us on the, the first floor here is our digital editing lab. And this space really serves two primary functions. One, it's our primary sort of um, primary uh, teaching space for um, instructor-led software instruction. So when students are learning how to uh, use video editing uh, software, for example, you know, um, learning any app, you know, part of the uh, uh, the Adobe uh, Creative Cloud suite. Uh, this is where they'll do that. So we've got 24 student workstations and an instructor workstation. Um, so, especially at the beginning of semesters, there's a lot of that going on in here. Um, and then uh, the rest of the time, this is space for students to come in and do their work. So we've got uh, we've got uh, iMacs in here that have good power, so that when they need you know a little more uh, horsepower in the computer than their laptop has, they can come in here uh, and get their work done. Scott, you mentioned the Adobe Creative Suite, which is you know it, 
powers so much work by our students. I'm really excited about this. The college is going to start offering certification opportunities to students for uh, those Adobe Creative Cloud um, uh, tools. So that's going to be one, another resume hit for our students. So that's really exciting. Yep, and they'll be able to take those certification tests right here in the Media Center. Uh, Where next? Okay, uh, time to head upstairs, second floor. Okay, coming out of the stairs onto the second floor, we sort of immediately spill out into uh, what will be the hub of many of the journalism efforts of the college. Uh, this is a uh, open newsroom space, another new space to the college, um, and another one of those instances where um, students are going to be able to work uh, together in the same space, even if they're not working on necessarily the same projects. Um, they're gonna be together, uh, they're gonna be forming relationships. Um, we're excited for um, the, the, the results of those interactions. A couple of things I'm really excited about as I think about this space. Um, first of all, the investment of our, uh, our friends, our, our alumni uh, in the work that we're going to be doing here. Special thanks to Arthur Miller for the Arthur Miller Newsroom Fund, which is really going to power some exciting work out of here. When, when we think about the, the, um, the college's contribution to Penn State as a land-grant university, we have to think about uh, what, you know, what kind of coverage can we help provide in the Commonwealth. And how can we address the growing problem of news deserts? And this entire floor, the way this floor works with the open newsroom, the collegian right off, uh, right off of the newsroom, uh, the news studios and the news labs, all of this working together to serve the Commonwealth with really powerful in-depth news coverage. That's our vision. And uh, I'm really excited about it as, as we move forward. And this will be, a, a, you know, a high energy, collaborative, open workspace for students to work closely with faculty to, uh, to do really powerful uh, work that serves Pennsylvania. So open newsroom, there, there's, uh, there are sort of, um, we, we sort of use the um, architecture of the existing building to sort of um, do, you know, divide off different sections of it. So the, the area over this uh, direction will be sort of your traditional uh, spaces where students get either with a laptop or at a, a workstation on, on, a, on a table can sit down and do some more focused work. Um, the Collegian will have uh, desks for reporters out here as well. Um, the centerpiece of the space is the hub desk. Um, so there will be um, sort of three positions at the desk that will probably change, you know, who's, uh, who's in those seats and what they're doing from day to day. But uh, we sort of think of this as sort of the, um, you know, a, an editor's desk or an assignment desk. And then there's also um, what we're calling a transmission operator position that will have access to all of the the all of the video and broadcast technology in the building where they have access to everything coming into the building and they have control over what we're sending out of the building uh, via live streams and things like that uh, and then overlooking uh, the media center the glass wall over there there's um, what, what's essentially a nice big couch um, that um, sort of uh, again separates this space while remaining open sort of creates another zone of, of the newsroom where um, you know, an all staff meeting for uh, student, uh, student media organization could take place. And there's a counter on the back here with stools so we can uh, fit a lot of people over here for uh, a meeting that um, you know, ha has its own space and its own 
Um, you know, a bit of privacy, but is still uh, part of the spacing as a whole. Yeah, I think about the, the planning conversations, right? The informal conversations around thinking about coverage of, uh, you know, of a trend or an issue, or um, think about this space on election day, right? And all the different conversations that'll be taking place and, and the direction from this area here um, as, new, as, you know, our vision is that student, organi student media organizations and the efforts of the, the formal efforts in the classes in the college are all working together to do really powerful work. So that's the way we've set up the space. So. All right, let's, we're going to take a lap around this floor too, so follow me. We're going to step inside to the Com Radio suite of studios. So Com Radio We'll be moving out of their space at uh, Innovation Park and into these uh, studios. And um, we're excited about the size of these studios. Um, the current, soon to be former Com Radio studios were uh, a bit, shall we say, cramped. Um, so students will be able to um, easily work together in these spaces. We're in the production studio right now, which is used to do uh, pre-recorded production uh, for the internet radio station. Uh, and then walking over this way into the air studio. And the air studio can easily accommodate um, four, um, four people on microphones at a time. All of these studios, though, um, are tied together through a a central um, digital audio system. So uh, microphones in here can be used, microphones in the production studio can be tied in here. So if, if it's a conversation that needs to involve four or five or six people, easy to do. It's just a matter of routing something into the board. So excited for these spaces. All right, coming into the strategic communications studio now, this is a, a space that uh, our college will share with um, university level uh, strategic communications office for um, uh, producing um, you know, messages that tell the Penn State story. Um, so it, it, it is a, uh, a smaller scale um, video production suite, um, but still full featured, but can be operated by uh, easily sort of one person. Um, so a control room, uh, and then a little dark in here right now, but a, a small studio as well. Um, so uh, this will be this, the, the place when um, you know, Penn State needs to put um, an expert on climate change, like Michael Mann, on, uh, on CNN. Um, this will be where, where, where those uh, originate. Uh, it'll be nice to have um, a space like that on campus that's easy for people to get to. Um, and our college will use it um, for, 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 for telling stories about the, the Belisario College as well. Part of this suite uh, also includes uh, a green room. So when... Uh, I'm just yeah. checking myself yeah. in the mirror here, Scott. <laughs> this is the green room, and we're, um, we're excited that uh, one of our alum, uh, Randy Yanishak, stepped forward and, um, you know, provided us, generously provided funding to make this green room, uh, you know, really good and comfortable space and, and one that will get used often. So um, thank you, Randy, uh, for, this, for this gift. And you know, it's closely located to the, the studio next door. There's um, monitoring. So you know, when you know, a Penn State expert is going to be on CNN, you know, we'll have CNN on here so they can uh, see what's going on before they, you know, uh, their segment. There's an intercom panel in here. So when it's time to go, the director next door can say, hey, Marie, we're ready for you.
walking past more uh, audio studios. And now we have come upon the uh, news studio. So you can see another nice on-air light out here. The real on-air lights above the door so that you, you know whether it's safe to go in or not. Uh, and the news control room essentially is a mirror of the production control room uh, down from the ground floor. Um, set up essentially the same way. The only difference is uh, this space incorporates uh, automated production systems that um, are standard practice at um, virtually every local television station and at most of the networks now so that a single operator um, when necessary can uh, you know, produce a, you know, a complete uh, newscast uh, with, the, with talent in the studio next door. So we'll walk you into the studio real quick. The new studio space looks a lot like the production studio. Um, higher ceiling in here because again, we're in the, uh, the, the, the addition uh, to the building. So we're on top of the Black Spot studio essentially. There'll be a, a, a set in here that can be used for uh, college productions such as the Center County Report and In the Game and whatever, whatever else comes next because um, with, with new facilities like this come new initiatives, new productions. And we're excited for that. Yeah, I agree, Scott. So Center County Report is a nationally, you know, uh, awarded uh, newscast. It just won Best Newscast in the Nation in 2020. Uh, we're relaunching a very popular uh, uh, broadcast that we used to do called In the Game. It's a documentary style uh, weekly uh, newscast that really focuses on sports. Very excited about that. But just as Scott said, we're going to be able to do so much more now that we have this dedicated studio. So who knows what we'll see here uh, in a few years. Yeah, stay tuned. Yeah. So, right. really versatile space. Uh, this is our uh, broadcast news air studio, so audio studio. This is where our uh, radio journalism classes uh, produce their newscasts um, and learn, learn the, the technical uh, tools of the trade um, for everything that is involved in audio production. And I just want to say one other thing about this space, which is going to be used by so many students. Uh, I just want to thank Marty Aronoff. Um, Marty, uh, thank you so much for the gift you've given us. We're naming this studio for, for you and your son, John. And um, just it's such an honor to have uh, you and your son, John's name here because Marty, you've done so much for the college over the years and for our students. And thank you for your investment in the Media Center. Really appreciate it. Lots of great things are going to happen in here. We'll take you now into the what we're calling the newsroom lab, and it essentially becomes the classroom for um, uh, productions that are happening out of the news studio, um, so that, that they have a. Uh, newsroom space to call their own when class is going on and they need things to be a little more controlled as um, yeah, they're, they're receiving a lesson um, but when class isn't going on you know, there's 
doors on on either side so it on on that side it spills out into the open newsroom proper on this side easy access to the news studio so this we're really going to get a lot of use out of this space for class and for co-curricular news production outside of class so lots of great use for the space all right well, let's head back downstairs All right, welcome back to the uh, main entrance here on the first floor. And that concludes the tour. I know Marie has a couple other things that she wants to share with you. I do, I do. Thank you for spending your time with us today. Um, you've gotten a sneak peek at uh, a building that is gonna transform uh, the work of the college and transform the lives of our students. Uh, I wanna thank all of those uh, who are part of this uh, time to, with us today who've already made gifts and contributions uh, to the future of this center. And uh, if you're interested in investing in any of the spaces you've seen, please contact Jose Legaro at jose at psu.edu. I do want all of you to know, you know, when you build a center like this, you have continuing needs for equipment and technology that are gonna be, that are gonna be with us. Um, we hope that many of you will consider investing in our media center equipment fund. Um, we've, you've probably got an email about this, but it's a chance uh, for you to, to invest. And also, we want to put your name up on the wall. This is uh, our donor, uh, donor wall, a digital donor wall. And um, we have different contributions that, that you can make. And this, your contribution is going to provide the funding we need for the equipment and the technology that we have to have to keep this center current. Current in two years, current in five years, 10 years, and 20 years out. So I hope you'll consider uh, a gift. Um, I uh, am excited. I <laughs> am invested in the digital donor wall with, uh, the, at the $1,000 level, and um, I'm looking forward to, I, I figured that's the only way the dean can get her name in the center. Uh, so I made, made my $1,000 gift to do that. So I'm very excited and I hope that you all will join me. Um, I also want to thank Scott Myrick and Karen Bryan for all of the work that they've done uh, to get this center where it is. Um, and uh, I hope we've been able to answer your questions today. And please keep your calendars open. November 12th is when we are hoping to uh, have sort of the formal dedication ceremony for the center. So keep that date open on your calendar because we'd love to have you join us. Thanks everybody.